my name is Winjit Almaderis. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, I practice um, in Sydney, Australia. My day-to-day -day work involves um, lower limb arthroplasty, as in hip and knee surgery, and um, I have special interest in limb reconstructive surgery, mainly osseointegration surgery. Back in 1999, he was an eager young medical student, starting out his career at Baghdad's chief hospital when he was faced with an unthinkable ultimatum. Cut the years off soldiers who deserted Hussein's army or be killed himself. There was no question in my mind that I would uh, uh, be forced to do uh, these kind of atrocities. Uh, but then I came up with a different idea that I could run away and uh, I managed to uh, hide in the female toilets, um, spend five hours there and from there onward, my life turned upside down and I became a refugee. Had you been discovered, what do you think would have happened to you? Oh, it's very simple, I would be executed. I came to Australia on a boat. I arrived in 1999, I spent significant time in detention centre. After I was released, I um, entered uh, the training program and um, became an orthopedic surgeon, qualified here in, in Australia and then I did postgraduate studies in Germany. I've been to Iraq so far six times. I'm going to Baghdad in a couple of weeks for the seventh time. I received a phone call from a government official here asking me if I would be able to help. And I said, yes, I would be more than happy. How have we seen so far? Iraq has one of the largest uh, number of amputees and disabled people uh, due to the wars that Iraq uh, went through and going through. Over the next 10 days, Dr. Al Muderis and his team of volunteer staff will perform life changing surgery here. I try to go to Iraq um, every three to four months uh, for a period of week. I do travel. Uh, to other countries as well um, that are developing, uh, such as uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asian countries uh, like um, Cambodia, um, um, Laos, uh, Vietnam, etc. And um, I dedicate um, around one third, of, one quarter to one third of my time for um, charity work. Osseointegration integration surgery is a revolutionary uh, technology that directly anchor up. A myelectric prosthesis or a robot into the bone and um, organize the muscles to operate that limb uh, more effectively by reducing the energy consumption and uh, giving the patient the maximum ability to perform and function with whatever they've got left. Osseointegration integration technology have um, developed uh, since the 90s. Um, it was um, initially uh, pioneered by uh, Swedish surgeon um, Rekard Brennemark, and, uh, who is the son of the inventor of OSI integration uh, technique, which was um, uh, utilized for tooth implantation, and it's very widely used now. Uh, but it was um, uh, a very small niche for a uh, few patients every year. Uh, when I started doing OC integration technology, um, I used the same technique that um, um, the pioneers have um, uh, utilized. Then um, I wanted to take it to the next stage and next step. And as a result of that, I managed to make it um, uh, a single state surgery and uh, developed an implant that allow to um, um, uh, be very stable, um, add the time of fixation, um, not dissimilar to a hip or a knee replacement. As a result of that, um, because of the work that we did uh, with um, making the procedure much simpler and uh, applicable to the wider community of amputees, um, numbers have escalated dramatically and um, now um, we have done um, more than um, two-thirds of the world population of osseointegration integration surgeries around the world um, and numbers are um, we have done more than 600 cases here in Sydney and um, um, there are um, 800 cases done worldwide using our technique um, out of the 1200 that have been done worldwide since 1990. This is Michael Swain. 
He's a British soldier who lost his limb, both of them in Afghanistan, five years down the track after being in a wheelchair. He walked his dog every day, he played golf, that's in his backyard, by the way, and he has his life back. But one of the happiest moments in my life is when Michael Swain was walking four weeks after the surgery back home, and his wife and his, daughter, his son were standing in the window, and the wife told the five-year-old child, come and watch Daddy walking back home. And he said, this is not true. This is not Daddy. Daddy doesn't walk. That brought tears to my eyes. I was honored to watch Michael Swain receiving his MBE honors in front of the Queen in Windsor Castle. What I noticed uh, is that patients who receive OC integration surgery, uh, they undergo significant transformation in their psychology and the way they think um, um, about many aspects um, in their life. And um, it's very frequently that I hear from um, people that um, underwent OS integration surgery uh, that they, don't lo they no longer feel that they are amputees, but they feel that they are someone who um, is walking with a robotic um, uh, assistant. Um, and uh, it is very, very um, interesting to see that people no longer uh, feel uh, that they um, have an amputation or any kind of uh, physical disability.